Welcome, guys. Today, we're going to go through a pastoral conversation. Someone has provided me a verbatim, and we're going to read through it, and we're going to look a bit more closely at some of the responses. As I said in another video of mine, this is a great way to learn and a great way to practice and a great tool for reflection. So let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see the conversation. Here we are. So just to let you know at the start, we're going to read through the conversation first, just to get a feel of it, the gist of it. And then we'll go back and look at each response and I'll share some thoughts and ideas with you. Okay, let's go. Hi, Lisa, how was your week? Oh, I'm learning new systems at work and they're really a lovely group of people. In fact, we had a team day recently and I did hammer throwing. What was the hammer throwing like? It was fun. We all had a go. It was very heavy and challenging to throw, but it was good. Do you want to sit down? I want to tell you something. What's happening? He's back. You'll probably judge me and don't want to talk to me. No, I'm not going to judge you. I fail and sin all the time. I'm always asking God for forgiveness. I told Alison, it's only you and Alison that know. Alison is a great friend. Yes, I'm going to their place for Christmas. I told Alison that I'm not letting anyone else come as I don't want that. He's coming and it's more than you know. His dad died and he's finding it really hard. He said he was coming at 8 but didn't get there until 10 p.m. He needs me and I want to help him. You saw the connection when we went to dinner. He liked you. Lisa, it's more that I don't want you to be used and get hurt. Is he still with his wife? No, he's divorced, but I told him it really hurts when he blocks me. He told me he won't block me on his phone. I know it, won't be, it will never be more than this, but it provides comfort and closeness. I'll never be able to have kids and will never be more than this. Lisa, God loves you, and I'm always asking for his forgiveness and help. That's great that you aren't seeing anyone else. You know, I know someone who struggles like you do. Plus, I'm aware of a singles group. I know I'm never going to meet anyone here. Our church is just too small, but I don't want to change churches again. Lisa, keep talking to God about it. I love the lament Psalms like Psalm 88, where the writers tell it like it is. Keep trusting God and keep praying. I've got to go now. Okay, thanks. So guys, that's the conversation. Let me ask you a question. If you were Lisa, how do you feel? Did you feel like the chaplain was really listening to you? Do you think you really got a sense of what this was like for you? Do you think he really understood you? Hmm, interesting. Let's go back to the beginning. We'll do a bit of dissecting. Guys, I want you to see again that when we set out a verbatim, here we've got C for chaplain and L for Lisa. And it's just a very useful way to set it out because if I want to specifically refer, refer to a response like C3, you know exactly what response I'm talking about. So it's a really nice way to set it out. And as you can see, like the vast majority of conversations we have, they start off on a social level. Before people typically invite you into their world, invite you into their pit, into their darkness, their crisis, before they do that, they want to get a sense of what sort of human being you are. And so they're going to test you by just having a everyday superficial social conversation. And based upon how you react and respond in that conversation, will determine to a great extent whether they believe that they can invite you into their world and that it's safe and that you're going to be respectful, okay? Now, in this particular pastoral conversation, just for complete transparency, the chaplain and Lisa knew each other, okay? And so as a result, they moved from the social conversation to the pastoral conversation very quickly. But let's have a, have a quick look at it. Obviously, this is just the social conversation, 
where Lisa's just talking about, you know, basically a fun day at work. All right. But you can see in L2, there's a shift in the conversation, isn't there? Right. She went from talking about the hammer throwing to, do you want to sit down? I want to tell you something. So here's the obvious shift from the social to the pastoral conversation. And guys, trust me, it's always obvious. That shift is always obvious. Okay, so let's get into the pastoral conversation now. What's happening? Okay, I don't have a problem with that. It's at the very start of the conversation. I guess if you're going to ask a question and you know, I'm not a fan of asking questions in a pastoral conversation, but this is, this is fine asking what's happening or what would you like to talk about? No problems. For myself, I would have just simply remained silent. I know she wants to tell me something, so I don't have to ask a question in order to get her going or to, to sort of extract the story out of it. She's already made it very clear she wants to tell me something, so I would have just remained silent. She says, he's back. You'll probably judge me and don't want to talk to me. So you can see in this particular pastoral conversation, they're aware of who this he's back is. Whoever this bloke is, they're both aware of it, okay? We don't have to be aware of it, but they are obviously aware of it. And the way she says it, he's back, you'll probably judge me and don't want to talk to me. So how does the chaplain respond? No, I'm not going to judge you. I fail and sin all the time. I'm always asking God for forgiveness. Guys, there's no need for any of this response. Again, I would have just remained silent and shaking my head just slightly to indicate, no, I'm not going to judge you. And yeah, I'm still here. I still want to talk to you. Okay. Um, I wouldn't find it necessary to say I'm not going to judge you. You see, when Lisa says you'll probably judge me and don't want to talk to me, that's her stuff. I'm not going to respond to her stuff. Okay. In a pastoral conversation, I want to say as little as possible because I want to keep the focus on the other person. You see, they're in their heart, they're thinking, and they're in their experience. I don't want to drag them from their heart up to their head with questions and, and shared experiences and stuff like that. So as, I, as much as I can, I'm going to stay quiet. She's, I wouldn't say I fail and sin all the time. Any Christian knows that. Any Christian person knows that life is a constant battle against sin and temptation. And of course, we fail and sin fairly regularly. OK. Um, and I'm always asking God for forgiveness. Absolutely. Of course, um, if I offend anyone I love, I'm asking for forgiveness. So, of course, with God, if I'm failing and sinning regularly, I'm asking for forgiveness. So none of that needed to be said to a Christian woman. OK, so I would not have said any of C4. I would have just remained quiet, waiting for her to actually get into what she wants to tell me. Lisa says, I told Alison, it's only you and Alison that know, okay? And the chaplain says, Alison's a great friend. Again, I would not have responded to, I told Alison, it's only you and Alison that know. I wouldn't have responded. I'm still waiting to actually hear what this is. Um, the chaplain said, Alison's a great friend. That's unnecessary. Obviously, she's a great friend. There's only two of you that are privy to this sort of information. So obviously, Lisa considers Alison a great friend, and it's not necessary for me to say that. So keep quiet. Okay. Lisa says, yes, I'm going to their place for Christmas. I told Alison that I'm not letting anyone else come as I don't want that. He's coming, and it's more than you know. His dad died, and he's finding it really hard. He said he was coming at 8 p.m., but didn't get there until 10 p.m. He needs me and I want to help him. You saw the connection when we went to dinner. He liked you. Chaplain responds, Lisa, it's more that I don't want you to be used and get hurt. Is he still with his wife? Guys, so many people, when they're in a pastoral conversation, that is, when they're in a meaningful conversation, they do stuff like this. They just respond with just noise. It's, it's, it's not a useful response at all. When I'm with Lisa 
It's not on me whether Lisa allows herself to get used and hurt. She's an adult woman. It's not on me. I don't have to say to her, I don't want you to get used and hurt because it's not up to me. It's not my task. It's her task to make sure that she's not used or hurt. So I'm not responding that like this. And is he still with his wife? Guys, contain your curiosity. That's irrelevant. It's not relevant to what Lisa just said in L5. Okay? So, you know, a response more like, you know, it sounds like you care for each other very deeply. That's fine. Remember my goal. I want Lisa to know that I'm hearing her and that I understand. Okay? And it's clear here. He needs me and I want to help him. You saw the connection when we went to dinner. She's telling me that this is a very special person in her life. And it's someone that she wants to help and support. Okay? That's what's important to Lisa. Not whether she's going to get used or, or hurt. And whether he's got a wife, that's that's the chaplain's own stuff. Don't, don't contaminate these very special spaces with questions like this and, and comments like this, okay? But notice, the chaplain asked a question. Is he still with his wife? And what does Lisa do? She answers. People will always answer you in these pastoral conversations. You ask a question, people are going to answer you. People try and be polite. Guys, don't ask questions in a pastoral conversation. You can see it steered Lisa towards answering this. It took her from a heart to a head to answer that question. That was an irrelevant question. It didn't matter, okay? But she answers, no, he's divorced. But I told him it really hurts when he blocks me. He told me he won't block me on his phone. I know it will never be more than this, but it provides closeness and comfort. I'll never be able to have kids. We'll never be more than this. I tell you guys, I feel this. I feel the pain that Lisa's in. She wants what we all want. She wants to be in an intimate, loving, committed relationship. She wants to be married to a man that she loves. That's what she wants. And yet she realizes as much as this relationship brings comfort and closeness, it's not going anywhere. She says, we'll never be more than this. There's such a, a tragic sadness to this. You know, I really feel for this woman. And how does the chaplain respond? Lisa, God loves you. And I'm always asking for his forgiveness and help. That's great that you aren't seeing anyone else. You know, I know someone who struggles like you do. Plus, I'm aware of a singles group. You know, I feel for Lisa opening her heart to someone who is not skilled in the pastoral conversation. All Lisa wants is someone to hear her and understand what this is like for her. So she doesn't feel so isolated. So she doesn't feel so alone. So she can say at least one person gets me. You get it. She doesn't get that with this chaplain. Lisa, God loves you. Lisa's a Christian woman. She knows that. And I'm always asking for his forgiveness and help. And the relevance to this conversation, I don't know what it is. You're just showing me how uncomfortable you are. That's great that you aren't seeing anyone else. Well, it's not great for Lisa. Lisa's alone. Lisa's desperate to connect with someone in a meaningful, loving way. So it's not great that she's not seeing anyone else. You know, I know someone who struggles like you do. That's not helpful. It doesn't matter. Listen, if I lose a leg to diabetes and my whole independent life has been turned upside down, it's of no help if someone says to me, there are other people who've lost a leg and, and they're getting by. They're making a life for themselves in spite of the fact they lost a leg. That doesn't help me. I know that. I know that I'm not the first person in the history of the world to lose a leg. I know that. But what I'm thinking about and feeling right now is how my life is going to be impacted by this. Okay, right now. How's it going to feel right now? 
So to tell me that someone else is struggling like me, it's disrespectful, guys. Do you think Lisa's not smart enough to know that there are millions of people around the world looking for what she's looking for? Desperate for that intimate, loving, committed relationship? Of course she knows. She knows and it's not helpful for you to say that you know people that are struggling like she does. And plus, I'm aware of a singles group. Guys, with the internet at our fingertips, everyone can access singles groups, sporting organizations. They could spend 10 minutes brainstorming ways to meet people in our society, in our community. And we can all find a myriad of ways to do that. She doesn't need you to offer her the fact you're aware of a singles group. It's not helpful. You're not listening. You're not understanding. And she responds in L7 to demonstrate that. She completely ignores C7. Everything the chaplain just said, she ignores it. He missed it. She let it go. She says, I know I'm never going to meet anyone here. Our church is too small, but I don't want to change churches again. Oh, my goodness. Talk about being torn. She wants to be in this church, but at the same token, she needs to leave to find what she's really looking for. This woman is stuck right now. Never going to meet anyone here. There's a finality. There's a sadness. There's a despairing. There's, there's a reality there. And yet, she really loves being there because she does want to leave. Even though she's desperate for love, she does want to leave this church. She's torn. What does the chaplain say? Lisa, keep talking to God about it. I love the lament psalms, like Psalm 88, where the writers tell it like it is. Keep trusting God and keep praying. I've got to go now. The chaplain is not listening. He's not understanding what this is like for Lisa. Lisa is desperate for someone to just listen and get her, but she ain't finding that with this chaplain, okay? Lisa, keep talking to God about it. She's going to. She's a Christian woman. She's going to keep sharing with the Lord what's on her heart. So she's going to keep talking to him about this very important part of her life, which is unfulfilled at the moment. So you didn't need to say that. And the fact that you love to lament Psalms, so what? That's great that you do. I love the Psalms as well, but it's irrelevant to this woman right now. Keep trusting God and keep praying. Uh-huh, she does. It's possibly all she has left. It's possibly all she has left. And then just to demonstrate how uncomfortable the chaplain is, he says, I've got to go now. It's like whipping that Band-Aid off. I just got to get out of here. Uh, eject a seat. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Guys, I get very passionate about this, as you can see, because I just, I know how wonderful it is to be heard and understood. And I've seen, thankfully, hundreds of times where people have been heard and understood and what a difference it makes in their life. Massive difference. And I can just imagine myself that Lisa left this conversation feeling unheard, you know, maybe not disrespected, maybe that's too harsh, but certainly not heard, not understood, not really listened to, you know, some advice given, some platitudes given, you know, but I, I feel raw. There's a rawness, there's an emptiness, there's a hollowness there. There's a pain that's still there that no one sees, no one hears. That's how I would feel if Lisa finishing this conversation, okay? And she says thanks. She's polite. People are polite. I mean, let's face it. You don't know what you don't know. You know. 
people don't know how good it could be, so they don't know how bad it can be. Um, and what Lisa got here, I, I, I'd bet she's getting off everyone she speaks to. Everyone is going to be offering her these platitudes, these suggestions, these silver linings, these questions. You know, they're all going to be offering it. Have you tried joining, you know, the local lawn bowls club? There's, there's some people there, uh, not just old people. There's some people there you might be able to associate with. Oh, Lisa, why don't you try another church? You might find that you really love it in a larger church and there'll be more chance of you meeting someone. That's, listen, I, get, I, I just think that's likely what she's going to get, okay? Because that's all people typically have, okay? Because they want to make it better. They want to make it better. They want to feel like they've been a good person and they've helped. And the way they do that is by offering suggestions and platitudes and silver linings and all the things that just destroy, destroy that very special space, that opportunity you have to sit with someone and listen and understand. So that's my feedback and reflection. Guys, so here's some questions for you. If you were Lisa, how would you have felt and why during that conversation? What happened when the questions were asked? How do you go when you're in a meaningful conversation with someone? Do you find it difficult to stop asking questions? What other responses can you come up with? Just imagine you were talking to Lisa and she said what she said, but she said it to you. And you wanted to convey to her that you heard her and that you're trying to understand what this must be like for her. How would you respond? Just a short response. See what you can come up with. And what could have been done differently? What do you think this chaplain could have done to give Lisa a very different experience? I want you to start thinking about this. So you can see, guys, how having a verbatim, even a short one like this, so understand a verbatim doesn't have to be long. A few key responses. Okay, that's enough just to get us going on coming up with new responses, new ways of thinking about things. Guys, you can see there, there's my email, traumacompanions at gmail.com. If you have a meaningful conversation and you can write up your responses, just like you've seen here, they say, you say, they say, you say, just a, a short pastoral conversation. Send it to me and I'll respond to you. And if you give me permission, I'll change the names and everything, of course, and put a video out like this so other people can learn. Other people can learn from our struggles in the pastoral conversation. Okay? Guys, thank you very much for joining me. I really hope that I get some verbatims from you guys. It's a free service that's only going to help improve your ability to communicate in the pit. All right, let me stop sharing this. Okay, guys, that'll do us for today. God bless. See you next time.